Welcome. Welcome to my potting shed. My name's Claire and just in case you think that you've um, accidentally clicked on the link to Gardener's World and um, I'm the female version of Monty Don or something, let me reassure you that this is not the case. I can see from the 27 cuttings that I took and um, so far only six have survived and let's face it there's plenty of time for their demise. So if I'm not uh, from Gardner's World then who am I and where am I from? So I'm one of the regional ministers from Southern Counties Baptist Association and I have the particular kind of remit of encouraging the churches in their mission with children, young people and families. And it's my pleasure to bring the greetings from the rest of the team. We have been praying for you. We've been praying for your churches and for your communities. And just in case you didn't know, we think you are amazing and you are doing an awesome job during these times. So why am I in my potting shed? Well, I've had the privilege of having two weeks of annual leave. And I recognise that it is actually a privilege not just to have the annual leave, but to have a garden and a potting shed that I could um, spend time in. And as I was spending that time, I had the opportunity to do quite a bit of thinking. And I thought I would bring that sort of context to your screens. I've had very different approaches to gardening. And the first year that I had it, I fell in love with a um, plant called Aquilegia. And it was this deep purple color, it was gorgeous. And I got some of the seeds from my friend's Aquilegia and I sowed it liberally around the garden. I ended up with a jungle of Aquilegia. It turns out you can have too much of a good thing. So that was my uh, first approach. In more recent um, years, actually the garden has been quite neglected because uh, the work that I've been doing just hasn't allowed me to kind of potter around in the garden. And instead I've kind of just really blitzed it in one day, which has kind of meant that I couldn't walk with a straight back for like three days after that. I don't know if you've ever been um, in that sort of situation. But during the two weeks that I've had off, I've been able to take it at a really nice pace. I've uh, popped into the garden every day. I've always done something, sometimes only like 15 minutes, sometimes two, three, even more hours, and lots of sitting around, which has been really, really great. So I've really had the chance to um, enjoy the space. But because I neglected it, there were so many weeds. I've got like three massive brown bin bags full and five other bags full and some tubs full of all these weeds. And clearing them gave my garden space. Lots of space, which has been great. And I've created a whole new flower bed. It's like a blank canvas. So I wander up and down the garden, thinking about um, which plants I might move that might enable another plant to kind of flourish a bit better. Or I think about um, actually maybe this plant needs to be thrown away now because it's really past its best. I'm absolutely rubbish at doing that. I kind of keep on to all the old scraggly ones thinking maybe they'll come back to some sort of bushy life, but it doesn't really happen. And then I think about what plants I could divide. And then I've been pondering about my new flower bed and I think, ah, what should I put there? What colours um, would work really well? And what heights might work? And where would the plant be in two or three years time? So have I got enough space around it for it to grow in that way? And I think, oh, is it too sunny? So what plants would be best in that sort of sunny spot? And, uh, and the soil, what's the soil like? And what plant would grow well there? And then I consult my plant encyclopedia, which is about like that big. I know there's the internet, but I love my plant encyclopedia. And I kind of look up and I sort of think actually, so what pink plant might work well at, if it grows up to be a meter and all this, and I, I never know any of their names. So I'm looking at, at it and that's great. 
I also sit at that stage where I ring my mum to ask her what's a weed and uh, what is a flower. Um, I don't always know this when I'm doing my weeding. I take a little photo and post it to her and ask her. And uh, I consult my mate's mum as well on WhatsApp and uh, has she got any suggestions for, play for plants for different spots. It's really great fun. And then at the end, most days, I've just sat on my chair and I've imagined and I've dreamed and I've schemed a cup of tea in hand and it's been great. At various points in the Gospels, we read about Jesus going away to pray, going away from the crowds, taking himself away from the people with their expectations, with their demands, with their needs and just being with God. I wonder, when he went away to pray, what did he pray for? And I wonder how he prayed. Did he think about what God's kingdom might look like in two or three years' time? In 2,000 years' time? I wonder if he thought about his teaching and which of his words would last. Which words would make it into print? I wonder if he thought about the people that he encountered and thought about what they might need to let go of. And then what life, their life, the life of their community might look like if they did. Holding all these questions before God. I wonder if he pondered people's reactions to his presence. If he clocked the people that thrived under his teaching. And if he noticed the people that wilted under his gaze. Did he, at the end of the day, review it with God? Talk it through? Or maybe at the beginning of the day when he prayed, did he plan for what the day might look like, what the future might hold? Talking all through with the one that knows him inside and out. I wonder, because he had that time on that space, did his plans change because he had the opportunity to kind of think that one through a bit more? And did he spend time sitting, dreaming, imagining, and scheming with God? I've had to really fight against my um, nature to automatically respond to the space that this time has created by filling the spaces. There is always more to do. <laughs> But I've had this opportunity, the invitation to imagine um, what might it mean for me to going forward? Are there changes that I need to make? Plans to let go of or adapt? I've had the space to think about what new possibilities might emerge and um, how they might look in three or five years time. I've, I suppose, posed myself the question, am I going to react out of wanting to fill the space? Or am I going to react out of the time I've spent dreaming and scheming with God? So that's what I've been thinking about as I've been pottering away in my shed and my garden. You are all very different to me. Um, some of you are really fighting to find space. Um, some of you, it's just not possible. And some of you have got some of that space, that gift. Whatever your situation, I wonder what God has been saying to you. I'd like to share a blessing from um, this book of blessings by John Donoghue. 
and it's a blessing for the one who is exhausted. When the rhythm of the heart becomes hectic, time takes on the strain until it breaks. When all the unattended stress falls in on the soul like an endless increasing weight, the light in the mind becomes dim. Things you could take in your stride before now become laboursome events of will. Weariness invades your spirit, gravity begins falling inside you, dragging down every bone. The tide you never valued has gone out, and you are marooned on unsure ground. Something within you has closed down, and you cannot push yourself back to life. You have been forced to enter empty time. The desire that drove you has relinquished. There is nothing else to do now but rest and patiently learn to receive the self you have forsaken in the race of days. At first your thinking will darken and sadness take over like listless weather. The flow of unwept tears will frighten you. You have travelled too fast over false ground. Now your soul has come to take you back. Take refuge in your senses. Open up to the small miracles you rushed through. Become inclined to watch the way of rain when it falls slow and free. Imitate the habit of twilight, taking time to open the well of colour that fostered the brightness of day. Draw alongside the silence of stone until its calmness can claim you. Be excessively gentle with yourself. Stay clear of those vexed in spirit. Learn to linger around someone of ease who feels they have all the time in the world. Gradually you will return to yourself, having learned a new respect for your heart and the joy that dwells deep within a slow time. So go gently, my friends, and God bless.